Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Good morning, and welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. The music for today will be provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir, directed by Hilbert Wiedenkeller. Our guest speaker today is the Reverend Dennis Hippenbecker, the vacancy pastor at Christ the Life Lutheran Church in Waukesha. Your liturgist is Pastor Jeffrey Miller of Berea Lutheran Church in Milwaukee. Many of our Lutheran churches recognize this Sunday as Life Sunday. All human life is valuable to God, so valuable that he sacrificed his priceless son to redeem them. Stay tuned as Pastor Hippenbecker will focus on the theme, God, my creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lutheran Radio Choir will sing the hymn, When All Thy Mercies, O My God. merciful God. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
our first lesson for this, the Sanctity of Human Life Sunday, is recorded in selected verses of Isaiah chapter 45. And these verses will also serve as the text for this morning's message. I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you though you have not acknowledged me so that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, men may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. It is I who made the earth and created mankind upon it. My own hand stretched out the heavens. I marshaled their starry hosts. Here ends the first reading of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite your attention to the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he went in and lived in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that it was spoken by the prophet Isaiah it might be fulfilled, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those dwelling in the region and the shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called to them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. And he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, and from Jerusalem and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. Here ends the Gospel of our Lord. Let's confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Immediately after the choir has sung the hymn, Lamb of God, we fall before thee, the Reverend Dennis Hippenbecker, vacancy pastor of Christ the Life Lutheran Church in Waukesha, will share his message, God, my creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. Oh, oh. 
of Jesus, dear Christians, how valuable are you? If society determined your value, it would probably consider such things as your age, your abilities or disabilities, your productivity, your health, your education, and so on. But when God determines your value, none of these things count. You are priceless because you are you. You are a unique person of his making. Today, we want to talk about life under the theme, God, my creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. In the text, the Lord clearly says, it is I who made the earth and created mankind upon it. And in Genesis, the Lord, through Moses, gives the actual account. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over all the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Is human life different than animal life? Definitely so. Otherwise, the law of the jungle would be in force the strong preying upon and devouring the weaker. God clearly points out the difference between man and animal. God took special efforts to create the first man and woman. They were created in the image of God and were given an immortal soul. They were given the power to reason and they were given dominion over the rest of creation and to live in eternal fellowship with God. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us to refer to God as Father. He has fathered us. We came out from Him. In fact, God knew us as a person before we were born. He said to Jeremiah the prophet, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. The fact that there is a major difference between man and animal should determine how we treat fellow human beings. The value God places upon each of us is seen, above all, in our redemption from sin, in and by Jesus Christ. God could have destroyed Adam and Eve after they sinned and started all over with a new couple. Or he could have allowed people to be born and remain as it is now, but without deliverance from sin, eternal death, and the power of the devil. But God worked out a wonderful plan whereby our sin is punished, God's justice is satisfied, and we are declared free. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Apostle Paul wrote, he died for all. And that three-letter word, all, means every human being. Not one person is excluded. The Apostle John wrote, he is the propitiation, that is covering, for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And Paul said, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not charging their trespasses against them. Jesus has redeemed us that we might be his own for time and for eternity. 
The Apostle Paul said, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. God has a purpose for us. So God not only created us, not only redeemed us for eternal life, but redeemed us for a purpose now. And certainly we should value each life. God also sustains life. The psalmist says, The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand, and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. Jesus said, God makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. God feeds the birds of the air, and dresses the flowers with beautiful clothing. And concerning the length of our life on this earth, the psalmist wrote, my times are in thy hands. So God shows his love toward us by creating us, by redeeming us, and by sustaining us. But there are many people in our society who do not think in terms of God giving and sustaining life from conception to natural death. Consequently, such language as product of conception, fetal tissue, potential person, lacking sufficient quality of life, vegetative state, and so on, are used to really depersonalize people. Depersonalized people tend to be seen as a burden or a problem rather than a human being created in the image of God. And what do we tend to do with a burden or problem? We try to get rid of it. No one denies that a fetus, which really means a child, is alive, but personhood is denied by many. No one denies that a comatose or senile or terminally ill person is alive, but having sufficient quality of life to care for, that's disputed. Depersonalization leads to devaluation, and devaluation often means the person does not have sufficient value to warrant continued care or protection, which in most cases, is costly. Concerning protection, the Supreme Court in 1973 ruled that the developing fetus or child in the womb does not possess personhood and therefore does not qualify for protection under the law. The court created out of thin air the right to privacy. The mother's right to privacy takes precedent over any possible right to life for the unborn. The phrase right to privacy is not in the Constitution, but the phrase right to life does appear in our United States Constitution. As far as the comatose, senile, or terminally ill are concerned, we are seeing a shift in thinking much of it due to economics. We hear more often such words as death with dignity, right to die, meaningful life, etc., and several states now allow assisted suicide. Well, does God regard the sickly and the dependent as less than a person, less valuable, less worthy of life? Oh, to be sure, all of these issues are difficult. And we Christians need to approach them with sensitivity, compassion, and understanding. And yet we need to stand on the side of life. Remember, when God looked at this sick, fallen creation, the same world we look at day after day, he chose to save and restore rather than to do away with. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I am the resurrection and the life. He that lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the light of the world. 
He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Be for life. God is for life. The devil is for death. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the creator, the redeemer, and the sanctifier of all human life. Lead us, your church, always to choose life. Guide and direct all organizations that provide care and counseling to those who are tormented by their decisions to choose life to focus on what you have done for them in Christ Jesus. Let us rejoice with all those who choose life that together true joy in Christ may be magnified and may we always be the voice of forgiveness for those who grieve over their decisions. It's into your hands, O Lord, we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. As we celebrate more than 85 years of broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ, we'd love to send you a special free gift from our ministry into your home. And as always, you can receive a copy of today's sermon. All you have to do is simply write to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. You've been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church service, pre-recorded at Trinity Freistad Lutheran Church in Mequon, Wisconsin. Today's music was provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir, directed by Hilbert Wiedenkeller. The message, God, my creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, was given by the Reverend Dennis Hippenbecker, vacancy pastor of Christ the Life Lutheran Church in Waukesha. Your liturgist has been Pastor Jeffrey Miller of Berea Lutheran Church in Milwaukee. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now close the service by singing the final hymn, Jesus, I My Cross Have Taken. Jesus, I My Cross Have Taken.
preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. Please visit our website at www.lutheranrcs.com to hear this service again. You may also request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. This program has always relied heavily on your financial gifts to produce and present these broadcasts. Recently, we've fallen on challenging financial times. Although we've been blessed with your monetary gifts, we need to continue to receive $400 per week from you, our listeners, to allow our ministry to continue. Please prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.